Lisa Gollum here again. I um, wasn't sure if I should wear my elf hat tonight, but it's kind of warm in my studio, so I'm going to lose it. So I'm just going to go ahead and get some paint on my palette. So here's my palette. I got white, magenta. This is ultramarine blue, but whatever blue you've got will work for you. That's Payne's Gray and that's black. Dip your brush in water, drag it on the sides of your cup or whatever you've got your water in. So I'm first going to make kind of a medium Payne's Gray. So if you're using black, you would need blue and black. So I will show you. I'm going to grab a little bit of Payne's Gray. Don't need very much. I'm just going to put a little bit. Yeah, as you can see, my Payne's Gray is a little bit dried up. But it a little goes a long way with Payne's Gray. So that's what Payne's Gray looks like. And I'm going to add some white. So as you can see, it's just a beautiful gray, grayish blue, perfect for snow. I want to start with like a little bit darker color and work towards the pure white on the very at the very end. So I'm going to grab a little more of my stubborn Payne's Gray and add it in there if it'll go. I'm stubborn. I don't like to throw out tubes of paint that still have paint in them. So I'm always trying to get that last little bit of good dried up paint out of them. There we go. That's a bit closer to what I was going for, more of a medium color. And I like to keep the paint on my palette fairly wet, so I'm adding water to it until I get the consistency that it won't run, but it's smooth, like butter, 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 really smooth. Maybe even a little more water, because I, when the first layer we put on our canvas is always a little bit tricky. So at this point, I'm just going to paint snow all over this canvas. So at this point, I'm not thinking. I'm just kind of making sort of areas and shapes with that dark color. And you can see how little I'm thinking. Really, really not. And you don't need to cover all the canvas, but you know what? It wouldn't be the end of the world if you did. I'm just kind of getting a sweeping sort of a feel. To the under layer of the snow. These are going to become sort of our shadow areas in the snow. You hear something in the background? That's my husband arriving home at almost 10 o'clock at night because he works way too hard. And if he watches this, he'll be like, hey, you mentioned me in your video. Yep. I'm ending up kind of painting this whole thing, but again, this part, it isn't important whether you paint the whole thing or whether you don't. It's more important that you just get some of that on. So I kind of roughly washed out my brush, but it's not even really necessary. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but with some more of a bright blue. Now that's ultramarine, so it defaults more to the purpley side of blue than the turquoisey side of blue. I'm just going to add some of that. It's, this is abstract. This is literally abstract art. I mean, you can look at snow banks or look at a photo and try, try to put the, your colors where they go in the photo, but this is more an intuitive, just how do you paint snow tutorial. So I'm not too worried about what the composition is going to be in the end. I'm really not. At this point, I'm scumbling a little because I want the grooves of that canvas to get paint in them and that's always a challenge with the first layer. Sometimes if you wipe your brush you can get it to go in a little more. Now I'm gonna just scurry some white on top of that. I just added my brush, stuck my brush in pure white just because I was noticing it was getting a little bit blendy blendy. So basically your first layer is just getting all these different shades on top onto the canvas. I'm going to do now the same thing without washing my brush. That's important because I've got kind of that nice blue. I'm just going to add a smidge of magenta. 
And because I didn't rinse out the blue, it turns this gorgeous purple. I'm gonna put my brush in water again. That's by the way, the number one thing that new artists don't do that would be really helpful for them to learn to do is to add water into their paint more than they, they don't think to do that because you know what, when we use latex paint, which is acrylic, we use that on walls. We don't have to add water to that, right? So people always say, that, why are you adding so much water? Well, it flows better. It's two things that make the paint flow onto your canvas better, water and alcohol. And I won't tell you which one you drink. <laughs> So at that point, I just have various colors of purple and blue on there as a backdrop or an underpainting, if you will. I am again not washing out my brush. So I'm just dipping it, as you can see, getting it well saturated in some pure white. Now I'm thinking about snowdrifts. So snowdrifts kind of have an arc, kind of a rounded feel. So I'm thinking about the tops of some snowdrifts, like that. And if you think about the top of the snowdrift, then what's behind it will, call, will create shadow and that will start to look 3D. I didn't start any place in particular. But I'm just thinking of, you know, whale humps or whatever you want to think about. And by the way, snow really isn't pure white. I probably make it a little whiter than it needs to be because I like the look of that, that whiteness. This almost kind of looks like mountains in the distance too. But you see, I'm just, I'm not thinking too hard. I'm just sort of roughing in some of those snow drifts. But you do have to kind of overload the brush to do this. And a little more white in here. I put less as you get further back. Now, normally I, in a painting, I would have a horizon in the back and stuff. I, I'm not doing that with this. I'm just sort of using this whole canvas just to kind of demo, demonstrate some snowy goodness. And you can stand back because that's always a good thing to do. I want some more prominent drifts near the front, near the, near the, the front, which would be the part closest to you. So I'm just gonna put some more distinctly white right in the front here. And you don't have to overblend. I actually tend as an artist to overblend more than I need to, but that's kind of a snowy background. Now that can look a little boring and I don't like to be boring. So at this point, I like to take a risk. I sort of wash out my brush a bit, but not completely. I'm gonna stick this up on the lip of my easel and I'm just gonna add some drama in here. You're gonna say like, what the heck is she doing? That's okay because white covers everything. But I didn't like, I was finding it was a little bit subtle for my taste. And I don't, you know, subtle's not really what I'm about. It's getting more and more subtle as I go back. That's why I started at the front, front or the bottom. Because as you move back, you, your paint is less and less on your brush. So you get more and more subtle as the paint goes off your brush. So start where you want the, the effect to be the most drastic and then move to where you want it to be more subtle. So of course, since I'm creating drama, I want to create a little blue drama too.
Now, if you actually look at a snowdrift with some snow, you'll see that there's a, lots of funky shapes, not always necessarily just these rounded shapes, but that's kind of what I like in my snow when I'm painting. I'm not a hyper-realism painter. If you're wanting hyper-realism, this isn't the place for you. If you want, I do do some realistic paintings, but they're not hyper-real because I, I really like them to look like a painting. I don't want my work to look like a photograph. Because I, I always figured if you wanted a photograph, you could take one with your false cell phone. These days, it's so easy to get a nice picture. Why would I go through hours and hours of painting just to get it? So that's my theory anyways. And I'm gonna grab a palette knife. Now, not everybody would make snow this way, but I like to. For the first, <coughs> For that first little pass of some white, I'm going to take my palette knife, pull it toward me, pushing down in the white so that I get white on the back of my knife. I picked kind of a long one with a rounded end because I don't want a sharp pointy edge. There's nothing pointy about snow. So I'm just going on the tops of those, of some of those areas. This is a fairly, very small canvas for this size, but I still like it. It's still working out okay. So this is what, this is abstracting it up a little bit. You'll see in a minute that it's not going to stay looking quite this abstract. This is how I started out. I'm going to hold it so. A, you can see better, and B, I can get paint on easier where I want it. I often hold my painting when I paint. I'm just putting this where I want really dramatic whites. But you see, if I didn't put shadows in on the painting first, I couldn't get this much drama with my white. I really couldn't. A little bit of white back there, but not a lot. Okay. So if you've never used a palette knife, it's magical, but it does take a little bit of practice to kind of know how to maneuver it and how hard to push it and what angle to hold it at. It's more complicated than it looks, but try it different ways. Um, I can tell you that when I use a knife, you probably were seeing it this way. If I showed you this way, if I, where are you? When I'm using a knife, my angle is not flat against the painting, but it's not this way either. When I'm putting on paint, it's, it's I don't know, 30 degree angle and just sort of pulling the, and then as I get less paint on the back of the knife, I go a little flatter. So that's just a little bit extra about the knife. Now, the fun part. So, I've never used this brush. This is a Quo brush from Shoppers Drug Mart. It's a makeup brush, it literally is, but not a cheap one, because cheap ones are disastrous, because hairs leak all over your painting. But this one is a good one, so I'm hoping it won't do that. It's very soft. And I am just gonna use it to blend. I hope I didn't get paint on my face, but if I did, it wouldn't be the first time. So. Wherever I like the harsh lines, I'm going to leave them, but where I want, it's still wet, I'm going to start up here because I want the most subtlety up here. And I'm just going to, this, this was a dry brush. I'm just going to sweep over those areas a little bit just to create some subtlety. And then down here, I'm going to do most of that in the bottom part. Same with this one. Just going to pull that on and make it a little more subtle in there. Now the knife helped me abstract this up a little bit, didn't it? And that was my, that was kind of intentional for me. If you don't like abstract, you probably may not like this technique, but I love it. So you can, you can do this, you have to do this before the paint dries, obviously, but you can make it as subtle or as dramatic. You can leave the drama if you want. You can kind of go in circles.
but I love the way it just creates a really nice mix of texture versus um, smooth and drama versus rest for the eyes. It's kind of like a banquet for the eyes. So if you want, if there, it's getting a little dry, but not quite dry yet, sometimes what I'll do, and because of the way the painting is oriented, I don't want the dripping drips to drip this way. So I'm gonna spray it with a spray bottle, but I'm putting it sideways, even at, especially at that top, because I would like the top, the back, to be a bit more subtle. See how, even though that paint was so dry that it wouldn't move before, with a little spritz of a water bottle, it moves even more. So, because I want that background to settle up. You know, it's almost looking like it could be sky, which is fine. I can, I can say that's the sky. <laughs> and I can also dip this in paint. Anywhere I want, like really more dramatic white, I can do that. This brush is actually, I'm really liking this brush. Mmm, just some yummy, yummy subtlety and just, it's really cool. And if, you, if you've watched our videos, you've heard me say this before, it's that overcorrect in my nature. Um, if I, if I, oh, I want more subtlety, and then all of a sudden I'm blendy, blendy, and I'm too subtle. So there you have it. Some fun snow, a little bit funky, a little bit colorful. Hopefully you can see it really well, <laughs> being silly. So have a great day or night or whatever it is for you. Cheers and peace and love. Bye.